Elon Musk takes 9.2%, so that's practically 10%, stake in Twitter after hinting at shakeup. What do you all think of that? This is exciting. This is exciting. This guy tweeted, uh, was it today? Did you all see this tweet? He tweeted, so the guy's singing, and it's the lyrics for that, and then there's a crowd, and someone in the crowd shoots him, and they celebrate. And I guess when you own 10% of Twitter now, um, you can do that. And uh, th I guess that's one way to give uh, the anti-whites at Twitter the finger. What do you think? Does that make you feel good or what? That he bought 10%. He bought we'll just round up and say 10% of Twitter. You know, they push you around. They push you around. They push you all, they're pushing you all around. They're pushing us around. You can't do anything you're right, and they just give you the finger. We're in charge, whitey. We're in charge. You don't like anti-whiteism? Well, maybe we've got a garland for you, right? Maybe we'll maybe we'll disappear you uh, like we do in every country the anti-whites take over. Nothing but bastards deleting, erasing, censoring into oblivion, white erasing you. Remember, use that concept in your conversation, white erasing us. And so then there comes along this man and he says, well, you know, I built electric cars. I made that work. I, I built a payment processor. I, I think it was the first one made that work. I think I'll build rockets and I made that work. And so now he's like, oh, you're going to push me around. OK, I'll just take a tenth of the company. <laughs> but he's smart. You say, why can't they do that? Why can't he do that with everything? It might actually say in this this article here. It probably does. Bloomberg reports. Pear Lady says, is Elon Musk pro-white or anti-white? He's he's definitely not white. I, I would not say white positive in any way, shape, or form. This is, he has, the spirit of the West is absolutely ablaze in him. Uh, and uh, he is taking charge of his world. He's created, we would have tens of thousands of Elon Musks if, it weren't for anti-whiteism. But he's out there. He's in an anti-white world. They're pushing him around like there's no tomorrow. And so he pushes back where he can. We would like to empower him. If we could empower Elon Musk and some of these other uh, centimillionaires and a couple other billionaires with Go Free, this practice, it would be, it would be over for the anti-whites overnight. Overnight. Could you imagine? Elon Musk, he's just like, okay, screw, I got 10% of Twitter, just launched my own. I'm sure he, you know, he could very easily uh, launch his own version of Twitter, and it's not going to be one of these gimping things. It just gimps along or something. It's going to immediately explode onto the scene, and then they maybe use the algorithm to uptick uh, and, and, and up reward those who speak with the lexicon. All of that rises to the top. The populations of Western countries would learn it overnight. And everybody could get off my back of, you've got weeds. And weeds are tough. Weeds are tough. But wait, what do the anti-whites want us to call them again? Whatever. You're, you, you know, you're, like, you're like seals, just like batting your flippers together. You're like cows. You're the bovine head knot. It's a new dance. Whenever the anti-whites say, we got something new for you dummies, and they're like, okay, what is it? You call yourself, call us woke, and therefore you all are idiots. <laughs> okay. Bloomberg, Elon Musk took a 9.2% stake. I want to find out what you all think as I'm looking at this story. We're at uh, 10 till the top of the hour, which is 8 p.m. on the East Coast. And just a little bit after the, the top of the hour, we're going to have the one and only Yiz, the unifier on. So sit tight. We're going to be talking about this wonderful picnic. Things are changing in the world exactly at a nice, slow, steady pace, the way that all things that are built and last are built. 9.2% percent stake in Twitter Incorporated to become the platform's biggest shareholder a week after hitting, hinting he might shake up the social media industry. 
So I guess it's going to be tough to tell him hit the road when he owns the most shares under this arrangement. Twitter shares, search, and because there's something important that I've discovered over the years that most people don't know about owning shares in a company. Why? Because you're told all your life about democracy. And you think that's how it works. But you were dumb, and now I have come to liberate you. Your chains have fallen. You may go free. Twitter shares surged as much as 27% after Musk's purchase was revealed Monday in a regulatory filing. The gain marked the stock's biggest intra-trade increase since its first day of trading following the company's 2013 initial public offering. And the initial public offering, by the way, for most who don't understand, you think, oh, that's the first time it's being sold. No, no. The friends have already purchased their shares for much less than you do. But check with CNN. The stake is worth about $2.89 billion, so $3 billion, based on Friday's market close. He polled his more than 80 million followers on Twitter last month, asking them whether the company adheres to the principles of free speech. After more than 70% said no, only 70%, that's pathetic. He had, who were the remainder? Were they all like short bus special? I mean, how do you think that Twitter acknowledges or, or respects freedom of speech? Musk has been one of the biggest personalities on Twitter and has regularly run into trouble on the platform. He seems like if he could be presented the go-free lexicon, the go-free method, if he could see exactly what we're doing here, he would be on board totally. It's exactly what we need, what all races need to save this country and every Western country from the poison of anti-whiteism. He would be able to identify that. He's a systems guy. He would be able to identify that immediately. I would move to Mars for him if he wanted me to work from there for white well-being back here on Earth. The company set ambitious goals for growth, including increasing annual revenue to $7.5 billion and getting to $7.5 billion. These companies, all of them used discoveries, inventions, uh, research, actual uh, equipment and, and line, uh, satellites, landline equipment, et cetera, that you and I paid for as taxpayers. If you are an American, we paid for this. But they get to, so that, that's democracy for you. They get to use the public trough and then they get to keep all of their profits private. It's it's a good game if you can get the get the money and get, or get the position. So it looks like maybe Musk won't create his own platform. He'll just be, be the ruler uh, of uh, the universe for Twitter and uh, slide right in there. I mean, that would be optimal, I would assume. Go through there with a uh, a metaphorical hatchet on all the anti-whites who have been kicking us off the platform forever. I mean, I've had nothing, I've got nothing but people following me on Twitter, but the number of followers never changes. In fact, it slowly decreases, just like on YouTube. This is the Stasi. You're not fooling us, jackasses. We know exactly what you're doing. You know, right now they're thinking, do you think he knows the hookah bar we go to after work? Musk posted a cryptic meme in December after Twitter announced that Agrawal was taking over from Dorsey as Twitter's CEO. It depicted Agrawal as Soviet director, Joseph Stalin. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> and Dorsey as Soviet secret police head. Wow. Quote, it looks like Elon has his eyes laser set on Twitter said Webb Bush analyst Dan Ives in a research note, adding that the stake could lead to a, quote, more aggressive ownership role. Twitter is particularly vulnerable to outside pressure because unlike Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Snap, 
The company's founders don't have special voting control. There it is right there. The company has just recovered from uh, activist pressure by Elliott Management that started in 2020, which led Dorsey, who was serving his second stint, oh, really, was that it, as CEO of Twitter, to set a succession plan. So what you most of you don't realize, I've discovered over the years, because you've been brought up on this myth, fairy tale of democracy, is that you think that when you buy shares in a company that you have ownership and therefore control to whatever degree of ownership you have over what the company does and over its destiny. You've been lied to. Because almost every company, and, and very strange here that this did not take place with Twitter, they set in these special voting uh, ownership stipulations so that, and look it up for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Check out CNN, look it up for yourself. But ultimately, the decisions for the company with these special uh, voting situations is retained by those uh, who established that situation. So conceivably, and it might be true, I've never looked into it, I don't care. Uh, maybe one of you know, but conceivably you could have a, a, a group of people and maybe that group is just two, maybe it's just one, maybe it's the family of a company. They might own 1%, maybe half of 1% of the company. They've gotten you to pay for it all and they retain the right to decide what the company does, the future, uh, what the, com the company does in the future, et cetera. So please look it up for yourself. But it's, it's this widespread uh, misunderstanding about ownership. And it's kind of the same way with citizenship, isn't it? You're a citizen. You get a vote. You get to decide what happens in the country, in your state, in your county. You get to decide. And really, uh, only a select group get to decide what takes place. And if you decide to vote a way they don't like, well, then maybe they will just take steps to get to results that they want anyhow, which of course is all perfectly legal because we live under their thraldom. And I totally agree with whatever they want to do.